Hey everybody, Mike Robles here. This is the 10th episode of the Combo Break. And to celebrate this momentous milestone, I'm gonna treat myself, so I'm gonna let somebody else take over. Take it away, whoever. Ah, oh, yeah, that's good. That's real good. Hey everyone, this is Ken Lobb here doing the Combo Break this week. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been want and really enjoying watching them every week, and I know that a lot of, uh, we get a lot of views, so thanks to everybody for watching. So as I'm the guest uh, host, I can't say I'm as good as Mike, so I'm gonna kinda cheat and be glancing at my phone to read some of the stuff. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do was call out the uh, top pros. Uh, as you know, we did the ranked leagues over the last uh, few weeks, and the whole idea is that after a month it resets and then the top two, 32 people are granted pro badges. So we're gonna call out the first few of those. The first one I know, because I've been following it myself, is uh, Masiaga 5, and I checked his uh, stats and it was kind of blown away. He had over 2,000 wins and like 60-something losses. Let's just say that's better than my record as my fight my way to gold. I'll get there old and proud. Okay, the second one we had was uh, Miltonson, and the third was X-Flash 6666X. That's our second and third place winners in the top 32. Very much congratulations, and I look forward to the next 32 fight. I've been following it again every night as I play KI. A couple other things we want to talk about today is, uh, and maybe some of you saw this, maybe you didn't, but around here, this amazing piece of art from Deviant went around of Sako. It was, I was floored. I mean, such a beautiful piece of art. So that, that came from uh, Big Dead 93. We also have some beautiful art from RZ Studio, Lightning Seal, and The Game World. So you're probably looking at those right now. I mean, they're, they're just gorgeous. Uh, go find them online, pull them down as beautiful wallpaper, or print them as pictures, whatever. I, I just am thrilled to see people love a character from a, one of our games and then pay so much of their time to make something as beautiful as this art. Uh, one of the other things that I love seeing, you know, as I go to different shows, Comic-Con, et cetera, is, you know, crazy people in cosplay. Uh, again, it's a great way to show your passion for all games or a particular game that you happen to like. And so we've got this crazy awesome Shadow Jago cosplay, and that was from Ian. Uh, he was from Comics and Cosplay. But again, just amazing work here, and you know, I, I, I kind of beam with pride when I see people do this kind of stuff. Just, just makes me happy. Uh, anyway, I guess the next part of the show that Mike usually does is the question and answer. So again, I've got the, funny enough, itty bitty font on my phone that I'm gonna read these, so if I squint, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, our first question comes from Jeremy McQueen. Uh, he asks, how would the first game have looked if it had been released on the Ultra 64? So it kind of was, we did KI Gold, which was sort of a hybrid between Killer Instinct 1 and 2. So you can see that, smaller sprites, less frames of animation. Uh, the music was stepped on a little bit from the arcade game. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking. So I'll answer what I think you might also be asking is, what would season one look like if it had been released on the N64? Yeah, smaller sprites, way less frames of animation. Obviously we would have, a, we would have had to um, capture them as sprites, because there's no way we would have been able to do the 3D characters on the N64. One a funny backstory, because those are always fun. Uh, way back when, uh, so for people that are familiar with uh, development software, the original Killer Instinct was made on uh, something called Power Animator. It came from a company called Alias. Well, Power Animator over the years morphed into Maya, and Rare actually helped with the creation of Maya. That's where Maya came, the name Maya came from in the game, was from this relationship with uh, Alias. I, my sweet dog who passed away last year, I also named her after Maya Software slash Maya and Killer Instinct 1. Uh, long story short, Maya was a NURBS-based uh, software renderer. So or, uh, basically, you would create models instead of in polygons, you'd create them with something called NURBS, which are curves. Now you could take those NURBS and you could tessellate them into polygons in Power Animator. Sorry for the technical mumbo jumbo. The, the moral of the story is we did that once with Fulgore just to see. And the Fulgore model from Killer Instinct 1 uh, when tessellated into polygons came out to be 770,000 polys, which at the time we were like, well, that'll never happen. And now, lo and behold, you see games that have a million plus, at least to generate the, the normal map. You get games like Forza and other racing games with million poly cars. So although we couldn't see what the original uh, season one looked like on the N64, we're in the polygon range on Killer Instinct 
that we did way back when, when we were just doing this fun test with Fulgore. Anyway, on to the next question. Jason Orozco, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, the lore of KI is very deep. With season two coming to a close soon and story mode launching as well, will we see KI in other formats of media, comic books, etc.? So we're talking with some of these people. We have interest from outside. We are interested in working with people around, uh, call it extension of the IP, whether it's a book or a comic book or other stuff like that. So th the message I can give you is stay tuned. For those that don't know, we actually did an original uh, Killer Instinct comic. You probably can find them out on eBay. Let's just say they were good. <laughs> I, I liked them. <laughs> I, I don't want to bash the hard work that we did you know, 17 years ago. But I would hope if we make new comic books for Killer Instinct, we can get the story bar to be, you know, a notch higher than those original comics. The art was very nice. Anyway, next, next question. Jared Zimmerman. Okay, Mike. Uh, that's me. I guess I'm Mike. <laughs> okay, I'm Ken. I'll answer for Mike and Ish and Keats and uh, Jay Bailey, whoever. When are holiday costumes, lots of bolds and exclamation points and question marks. I can't actually answer that. We gave away the holiday costumes, uh, you know, you could get them around holiday and I, they're turned off now. So it's an interesting conversation. I will talk to the guys about why don't those come back? Maybe they would come back for next holiday, but it's interesting to maybe bring them back for special events where maybe I could earn the Rudolph the red-nosed saber puppy. <laughs> anyway, next one. Uh, Lay Velacorta asks, Will the special guest be Maximilian Dude? Max, you want to be a special guest? That would be kind of cool. I'd like to see Max as an announcer. He's doing a brilliant job, obviously, just as a, the fan um, working on some stuff. But he's also, we're, we have him working for us for some of the trailer work right now. So it's, I'm super proud that we were able to find this person that loves fighting games so much and get him to help with some of the stuff we're doing on KI. It would be kind of cool to see Maximilian Dude as a guest. No promises. Stay tuned. Um, I, I have to tell this story just because that's the kind of stuff I like to do. Um, we announced uh, KI, you know, as you know, at E3 a couple years ago. And that night, I, I was looking around on the web to see the way people respond. And I saw the Max uh, video, you know, Max freaking out. <laughs> it was, I, I was like, tearing up might be a slight exaggeration, but goosebumps and a grin from here to here. I was so happy to see just the way people responded in general, but very specifically, here's this crazy awesome dude getting really excited about Killer Instinct. So lo and behold, the next day I'm walking around the floor at E3 doing what I do most of the time at E3. That would be research. I, I think I just call it playing games and, and maybe learn some stuff. But I was playing a lot of KI. It was kind of fun because I could beat pretty much everybody. And lo and behold, into the booth comes Max. And I just, and like a fanboy, I'm just like, Max, I saw your video, it was so awesome. And Max kind of looks at me and like, oh, oh, Ken, nice to meet you. And, and funny enough, I ended up playing a bunch of pros on the Mad Cats booth uh, the next day. And I beat a bunch of people that are really good. And when I finally lost, it was to Max. It was close, but it was, uh, it's cool. And I, I like Max a lot, so it's, it's cool to see a call out. Uh, next question from Tony Augusto. Again, I'm really sorry if I butcher people's names. You'd be surprised how many people call me Loeb. My name is Ken Lob. It's kind of like a lobby. Or it sounds like the club. Uh, anyway, uh, Tony asks, think bigger, okay? What time, like, does the new KI game take place? In KI 2, they were blasted into the past a thousand years. Are we still in the past or back in the real timeline? If so, how they got back to their real timeline? Wow, that's a question that I think Adam would do a better job answering. All I know is every game I've ever worked on, I kind of work on the core mechanic and let's make that fun and then let's build out the set. Where are we going to play and what are we going to do? And then, and then we kind of put a story on. And I'm sorry if that sometimes leads to bad stories like the original KI and KI2. Uh, to answer your question as much as I possibly can, everything that's happening in the Killer Instinct Season 1 and 2 universe is now or current. It's not like it's happening in 2015, but it's no longer, hey, we want to build a, you know, kind of caveman barbarian guy, therefore time travel. Uh, with the original Riptor, the whole idea was it was DNA um, recombination, kind of like Jurassic Park. But when we went to season, uh, to sorry, Arcade Killer Instinct 2, we clearly had time travel as part of the story. 
we're not doing that this time. We would like to tell a more cohesive story about our characters, and I'm really looking forward to hearing and seeing the way people react when we unleash the, uh, the stories, the story mode at the end of season two. So that's all the questions that I have today. I'd like to finish by once again thanking Mike for doing such a great job running Combo Break. I watch it every week. And for um, all of you, obviously, for watching. And I, of course, I would be a little like not a good grandfather if I didn't say, hi, Mila. Hi, Mila, pretty cool. Grandpa's on TV, huh? Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Go Killer Instinct.